is a stretch of land running horizontally across the continent of Africa, spanning between the Atlantic coast of Senegal and Mauritania, across 5,400 kilometers of African landscape to the Sudanese coast along the Red Sea. This long, ribbon-like expanse of land is the Sahel. It's a transitional ecology, holding back the creep of the Saharan desert from the north and the Sudanian savanna from the south. The heat and the extremely low precipitation of the Sahara prevents almost anything from growing there. But in the Sudanian savanna, there's enough moisture and rain to support a tropical ecology with open canopy forests. What this means for the Sahel is that it's a gradient between these two climate zones. If you were in Senegal with your back to the ocean, facing east down the length of the Sahel, along the whole 5,400 kilometer stretch, the entire left side would be shades of brown and orange. Extremely hot, very dry, bordered by the world's largest hot desert. On the right side of the Sahel would be shades of green and blue. The landscape would be humid and fertile, with some areas more humid with more vegetation than others. Compared to the Sahara, the climate of the Sahel is a breath of cool, fresh, moist air. But compared to the rest of the world, the Sahel is still really hot and really dry. Average daily temperature highs during the wet season hover around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, or 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, while the dry season can see average highs up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. The Sahel is a relatively windy place, which makes it difficult for a cloud to stick around long enough to grow heavy with rain. The typical lack of cloud cover means the Sahel suffers from relatively low precipitation, especially in the north, and it blazes under a sun whose glare is only interrupted by the night. The wind pushes the clouds away, but it also frequently stirs up dust storms that sweep across the landscape and affect everything from the plants to the animals to the humans living there. Another factor that life has to contend with are the frequent droughts, which hit hard and last for years. One of the longest droughts in the Sahel in recorded history lasted for over 250 years. The geography of the Sahel is defined by its semi-arid grasslands and its hot savannas, spread across a flat landscape of steppes and plateaus. Almost the entire stretch of the Sahel is relatively flat, with the landscape gently undulating between 200 and 400 meters in elevation. Despite its relatively flat terrain, there are a few mountains and some plateaus that reach up from the ground. Just like in the Sahara, the highlands are able to disrupt the flow of dry air, and they create a local climate of relative humidity and moderate temperatures. In the Sahel, these highlands have created such distinct habitats that the life forms living there are genetically and morphologically distinct from those life forms living in the hotter, drier lowlands surrounding them. Where these flat lowlands in the Sahara are punishingly hot and so dry that only the hardiest of the hardiest species can endure living there, the flat lowlands in the Sahel are, by comparison, not as hot and not as dry. Where the Sahara Desert gives way to the Sahel, the resident plants are relatively small and simple, able to eke out an existence in the dry soil. The northern regions of the Sahel are dominated by xeric adapted vegetation, like cactus, desert shrub, and grasses. Although this part of the world is more accommodating than the Sahara, the height of the dry season is still too brutal for most life. Trees will shed their leaves, shrubs will go barren, and grasses will die off, only to grow back later at the start of the wet season. Further south in the Sahel, the landscape becomes markedly more humid and can support a greater density of grasses and a greater biodiversity of plants and animals. Because of its wide expanses of grassland spread across a relatively flat, easily traversable landscape, the Sahel is an ideal place for grazing mammals. All manner of grazing mammals, including numerous species of charismatic African megafauna, live and migrate throughout the Sahel. There are a lot of gazelle species here, including the Dama, the Dorcas, and the red-fronted gazelle. These gazelles are all like small deer, with long, thin legs and large, heavily vascularized ears 
that they use to dissipate heat as they move about in the desert sun, and they all have brown patterns on their fur that can be used to distinguish them. The Dama gazelle is mostly white. It's white on its face and underbelly, it's on its rump and most of its legs, but it has brown fur draped over its back and its shoulders like a cape, and running down the outer surfaces of its legs. Where the Dama gazelle is tightly limited to a few clustered habitats in Central Africa, the Dorcas gazelle has a range that spreads from the Sahel across the entire Sahara, up to the Mediterranean. These Dorcas gazelles blend in with their sandy environments, with a fur coat of a more orangish, reddish-brown color, which extends over more of the head and the legs than the brown fur in the Dama gazelle. The red-fronted gazelle and its cousin, the red gazelle, appear similar to the Dorcas, but their range is limited to just the Sahel. There used to be a large grazing mammal species in the Sahel called the scimitar-horned oryx, a pale brown, cattle-looking animal named after its extremely long, slowly curving horns. But the wild populations of these oryx have been overhunted and poorly managed, and they were driven to extinction in the wild in the year 2000. Now, the scimitar-horned oryx only exists in captivity. So naturally, where there are herbivores, there are carnivores. These large herds of migrating mammals like water buffalo, and these numerous little groups of grazing mammals that are spread across the grassland, like in the case of gazelle, all of these attract carnivore populations. These predatory species include charismatic African megafauna like the Senegal lion, the Saharan cheetah, and the Sudan cheetah, and other predators like wild dogs and hyena. The Saharan cheetah has white fur with little to no dark spots. It's a beautiful creature, uh, almost elegant, with long legs and a slender build, although it's critically endangered, with less than 250 adults left in the wild. The Senegal lion, which used to be spread out all across the western half of the Sahel, also has fewer than 250 adults left in the wild. Its range has been reduced by 99%. The Sudanese cheetah looks like what you would typically expect when you think of a cheetah. It's got the brown-orange fur with the dense spattering of dark spots and a long tail and long legs. Although much like its cousin species, the Sudan cheetah is endangered, with estimates of no more than 2,000 adult individuals left in the wild. There are numerous factors coalescing to push these animals into extinction, first and foremost being habitat loss induced by climate change and human agriculture. Humans have lived in the Sahel region for almost as long as we've been humans. The first human ancestors that descended out of the forests of eastern Africa and onto the grasslands spread out into the plains of central Africa and the Sahel. The human populations who have lived here for the last 200,000 years of modern human existence have adapted to the heat and the relatively dry climate. They've established a semi-nomadic lifestyle with hunting, livestock, and even farming despite being partly nomadic. The movement of peoples within the Sahel follows the wet and the dry seasons. In the northern areas of the Sahel, the sand and sediment from the Sahara Desert has fertilized the soil and made the ground very nutrient-rich for plants. The limiting factor here that prevents plants from taking advantage of this really rich soil is the raw heat and the dryness. The lack of moisture prevents plants from growing here and taking advantage of the rich soil during the dry season. But during the wet season, it's humid enough to support a rugged desert ecology, and plants can flourish in the soil. Humans will migrate into the north of the Sahel in the wet season to take advantage of this rich soil. They'll set up seasonal farms, and they let their cattle graze on the vegetation, which typically produces high-quality feed. As the wet season ends, it gets hotter and drier, and the vegetation in the northern Sahel gets burnt away by the sun. The human nomads move south, closer to the rainforests at the heart of Africa, where it's more humid and where there's more available vegetation. Although keep in mind that this vegetation is the savanna and the grassland of the Sahel, not the tropical rainforests of the Congo Basin. So the available vegetation in the Sahel in the dry season is typically grasses, shrubs, and xeric succulents. As far as the cattle are concerned, the grasses in the southern Sahel are more abundant, and they offer a greater raw quantity of food. 
although the soil isn't as rich as it is up north, so the food quality isn't as good. Human populations here have been historically plagued by droughts, which bring with them not just a lack of water, but a crop failure and a mass death among the wild plants and animals, which leads to famine. These droughts are getting worse in the modern day because of climate change, leading to an increasing desertification of the Sahel. Increasing temperatures and decreasing precipitation is really hurting the local plants, and when these are diminished, their ecological effects are also suppressed. Receding grasslands lead to unstable soils and the encroachment of sand dunes from the Sahara, which creates a kind of local, self-reinforcing ecological cycle of desertification. Add to this the emergence of exploitative and unsustainable agriculture techniques brought in from the developed world, which has contributed to the degradation of the land in the Sahel and accelerated the desertification. The future is bleak for most of the plants and animals that live here, as the Sahel is being slowly consumed by the Sahara Desert. <laughs>